Okay, good Nerev Shabbos, a good Chodesh. Uh, on my way to the Mikveh of Shabbos. And this week's Sedra, I never knew this before, talks about the Mikveh. Uh, my Rebbe, the Kalva Rebbe Shlita, he should have a poor Shlamer, a great and Rezal. He said that, why did Yitzchak Avinu dig? wells. He said that he, he dug wells because he needed a mikveh. For him, for his mishpacha, they needed, they needed, they needed a mikveh. When heading to Swan Lake, New York, they have their actually Mayim Chaim mikveh, well water mikveh. That's not the mikveh I'm going to because it's not open right now, but it's uh, quite fascinating, you know, that, uh, That, that, uh, that type of idea that that's why you need to dig those wells and why the Plishtim the Philistines didn't want the wells but we see today there's, that's the number one fight that the Sitra Achra fights against is the Mikveh it's the Haris Mishpocha you know Amolus Gavain in America used to be People they would consider themselves Orthodox, and they, they didn't know anything about mikveh. It wasn't on their on their radar. They thought that's something the Hasidim did. You know, other people they they uh, they kept Taras Mishbacha, but the mikvehs, women's mikvehs, they had a lot of questions. It wasn't so simple. Al Pialocha. Most likely, can find some kind of header to say that those mikvahs were kosher. But it's, uh, excuse me, you know, certainly they were questionable. The mikvahs that they exist in America, really, about half the mikvahs in America. Until Samarov came to America, and he sent uh, Rabbi Deutsch around America to, to to clean up the mikvahs to make sure they were really kosher. And these mikvahs they were filled up with, with tap water, and they had drains in the bottom. They were just bathtubs, pretty much, big bathtubs. It, you know, can you say maybe there's some way to? It's kosher, yeah, but there was no rainwater involved directly. Ah, of course, well, where does water come from? The rain, it's, you know, Hamashoka, and it, it's not my Shuvah, but it's not picked up in a bucket. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, I can understand there are different opinions there, but still, it was very questionable until this time when Safarov came to America and he sent Rabbi Deutsch around and fixed it. Really fixed the mikvahs in America to make them look at I mean, yes, but he it. Maybe it's a little bit more than but he it. The mikvahs that they were before them. Anyway, with this being said, let's talk about the concept of water. Not just, you know, I remember Rabbi Fishbane, the Gazunzai, said that yet the Yosef at Tzadik. Medrash says, I don't remember seeing this inside, but Medrash says that Yosef at Tzadik, when he was in, in the base of Surim, and when he was in prison, he, um, he asked for water. And, he, and, and instead of drinking the water, he washed his hands with the water. Echo Basir. And uh, Natilsi Dain. It's an important thing. The um, I heard a similar story. This happened up. Scusi again, I know. Al Khalis Ramey. Similarly, 
you know, one time he asked the Gaba bring it, or Hausbuch or someone to bring him water. And, uh, and and he brought him water to drink. He said, no, I meant water to wash my hands until he died. Something to keep in mind. The Hashivas of washing hands, you know, the importance of this. Of, um, and then Halacha. There's such a thing in the Tilsidayim. And in Halacha there's also the Mikvah. We're talking more about how the, the Koychus Atumba try to prevent Paris and Mishpacha. This is something that the Reform, they for years and years rallied against the Mikvah. Now they're being open minded to it. Conservative were a little bit more open to the Mikvah. But usually it was uh, mostly for gayers. Um, but I've heard of uh, you know conservative rabbis making gayers in the swimming pool also. Um, I don't know, that might be a mistake. It might be a misunderstanding. Um, most of the conservative rabbis I know use kosher mikvahs. Form, if they give it an option. If you want to convert with the mikvah, you can convert without the mikvah. It's not a conversion without a mikvah. I was going to say this today at work. I didn't say it. Maybe it's been a shemaim that didn't say it. But, you know, they asked Rabbi Yosef Chaim Sonnenfeld. Very famously, I heard this from Rabbi Weinberger. I heard it. I heard the Rabbi Yalkut said it in the name of uh, Rabbi Yosef Wolfson also. Um, to, that uh, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld they asked him why a few times a day he would go to the mikveh and he said if the mikveh has the power to turn a, a Gentile into a Jew imagine what it could do to a Jew uh, Rabbi Yal he said they hear from Rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Wolfson the same thing for him uh, Harvin is Yamaharts was Yehadim um, so therefore, if, if Purim has the power to turn Gentiles into Jews, imagine what Purim can do to the Jew. I'll leave that aside for now. Let's see if there's anybody here. Good for Hashem, at least I can go to the mikveh here. The other bungal column is nothing. So I'm going to go to the mikveh now. And this has been probably one of the longest stretches in a long time. No, because when I went to the academy, I didn't go to the mikveh uh, for for a whole week also. So um, now we you know we changed the clocks. It's not like I can go to Scranton all the time. We don't have vegetables to drop off. So uh, and then if I would try to go after work, it'd be already after after Shkia. It's too late. And Scranton for sure. They don't let you go to the mikveh even a half hour before Shkia. But at least it's open all day, which is very nice. Um, so here I am, Swan Lake. And, uh, Yerit Sashem. Chap and Abyssal Tahara. I would last, I, I went, last I was in the mikveh was in Scranton, was, was, was Sunday. I was going to Lake every day, but it got a little too cold. And I get home and it's pretty dark. And, uh, I haven't been doing it. Maybe, maybe I could still go in the dark. Who knows? But at least I'm here. All right. Have a good Shabbos. Thank you.